Construct 3 is a powerful 2D game engine with a shadow learning curve. And on top of the base game engine, there are lots of different add-ons that you can add and apply to your game. But these have always been a controversial thing inside the Construct community. I'm going to dive into why this is and how add-ons can be useful inside of your programs. So the first main issue that we come with in terms of why add-ons are so controversial is to do with this, missing add-ons. If you do not have an add-on for a project that you've opened, you get this message added. This means you now have to find that add-on and attach it. This because for some reason constructs attach add-ons to your browser and not to the construct file. This means that actually if you clear out your cache or cookies inside of your browser, then you have to reinstall the add-ons each time. Now to install an add-on, we need to have a new project open. We go to the menu and once we've got our add-ons from this get add-on link, we can go to view and we can go to add-on manager. This will have all our add-ons that we've currently got linked to our browser and we can install new ones. And you'll see that I've got a variety here that I've used for this video. And we can double click and it'll ask us to install Always with a warning because these are obviously community made add ons and not directly from the construct team. So there's always warnings about bugs and crashes. And then we can hit install and it'll be added. Finally, we need to restart construct free. And once we've restarted it, we'll be able to use the add ons. This is a lot of work and quite a few steps just to get something really, really simple added. But this has led to most people in the construct community just simply staying away from add ons. I'm going to show you five of my favorite add-ons today that might hopefully change your mind about add-ons and just get you thinking maybe it's time to have another look at the different add-ons available inside Construct. The first add-on that we're going to be looking at is called Trail Render. Now Trail Render has a load of fantastic properties that we can use and we're able to create these trails that follow behind an object. In this case, which is an example by the developer themselves, this is adding trails on for a car. So as the car drives around, we leave two tire tracks when we're turning. This can be also added to a bullet. So as the bullet's flying around the screen, there's a trail shown where it's going. It's a really, really fantastic and really, really simple add-on that just gives us that little bit of extra aesthetic appeal to our game and can be just a really, really nice addition to any game out there. The second add-on is called GLSL Sphere. And now this is not really a behavior, but actually an effect that we can add on. So we can take an image such as this world map, and it turns it into a sphere that we can rotate on any of its free axes. Now, this is what I came up with after five minutes playing around the tool, but the developers got another project where they show the earth being bounced around and physics being applied to it. So this one is definitely one to play around with if you want to use 3D objects and have 3D spheres in your game by taking a flat 2D image beforehand. This is one to definitely play around with and spend some more time with. If I could take one of the add-ons that we've looked at today and put it inside of Construct Forever, this would be it. This is the spline behavior. And what this allows us to do is set loads of points and our objects will just follow each of those points one at a time. Now, in terms of the settings that we've got for this, we can choose if it loops around, so when it gets back to the beginning, if it goes back to the first point, if it changes the angle of the object that we've got. And then we've also got something called um, tension. So this is actually, do they follow it quite straight and dynamically, or do they curve a bit and follow that natural curve? So on start of layout, I just set up loads and loads of different coordinates. I got these by just literally moving my mouse around the track to get those different points. And that was it. That was the whole thing set up. And now both cars will follow around the track and move to all the different points around the track. And we'll just keep looping round and round again. If you want to try an add on and you want one that you just want to keep and use every single time, this is the one to get really easy to use. Lots and lots of different uses for it out there must have. Skinit is one of the more impressive packs that we're looking at today. Now you need to download the behavior and the plugin. So there's two different files to add into the add-ons folder for this one. But what we can do is we can pick up hats, we can pick up 
body parts, trousers, boots, all sorts. And if we change our complete character skin, all those stuff remain as well. So if you're looking at making an online shooter or an RPG and you want the character to have lots of customization, but don't have to have to rebuild all this infrastructure again on top, this add-on does all the hard work for you. Now there's so much to dive into with this one and I've only just scratched the surface, so I will be learning this in my own time. But if you do really want to see more of this and learn how to use this tool, please let me know when I will record some tutorials for it and we can learn it together. You can also see in the second example that we've got from the developer that actually you can create random NPCs as well from this, which we can use inside our game. So if you like the idea of having skins or lots of NPCs and having it all different customized, definitely have a play around with this one. The final add-on we'll be looking at for today is called JJ Weapons. Now, this is one of my favorite ones that I've been using for quite a while. And this just allows us to create guns that have got clip size, ammunition. We can say the time it takes to shoot, the time it takes to reload. It auto reloads if we fire all our bullets. We can also assign a key for shooting, a key for reloading. And even the image point that we're using to for the bullets to come out of. This does everything and it does it so simply. So if you're doing any sort of shooter inside of Construct, Download this plugin, it will just save you so much time. It is so easy to use and it just gives us so much control. You can see that I've got two guns. I've got the first one at the top that can fire 30 bullets and it can fire really, really fast. And then I've got the second one that shoots much slower. It's only got six bullets. I can store all that data as well. It auto reloads as soon as it runs out because that's a tick box that I've got on. And I can also right click to reload it as well at any point which I've just used right click, but you can set this to R, which would be a key that's more preferable. So anything to do with guns, this is definitely an add-on to use. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video today and have changed your mind a little bit about add-ons inside of Construct. In the comments, I want to know a couple of things from you. I want to know what do you think of add-ons? Are you for or against them? What was your favorite add-on today? If you've enjoyed any of the projects that you've seen featured in this video today or any of the add-ons, they'll be all in the description below. I'll see you in the next video.